We've covered various things in the series so far, from an anthropomorphic moon character at McDonald's to the true pioneers of self-driving, Mercedes-Benz. But now let's delve into a blast from the past that is children's television networks. Primarily on this episode, Nickelodeon. The channel first debuted in 1977 under the name of Pinwheel, which focused on original and educational shows similar to that of Sesame Street with live-action skits mixed with animated shorts from various countries across the globe. Two years later, Pinwheel would change its name to what we all know today as Nickelodeon. It still consisted mostly of educational programming, but also saw the debut of the channel's first major hit, You Can't Do That on Television, with the beginning of the 80s. The channel would be molded over the next few years from the mid-80s to early 90s as the foundation of what partially still remains today was set. For example, it was in this period where the classic orange slime logo, its classic bumpers, Nick at Night, opening of Nickelodeon Studios, and the start of Nickelodeon's Kids' Choice Awards along with game shows like Double Dare were established. Most 80s and 90s kids view this as one of the best eras of Nickelodeon. But what would solidify itself as the absolute peak for the network would be heralded from the early to mid 90s. The golden age, if you will. This period saw Nick's variety being on point and able to attract fans from all walks of life. The basis of Nicktoons were established then with Rugrats, Doug, and Ren and Stimpy being released, balanced by unique for the time live action shows like Clarissa Explains It All and with game shows like Legends of the Hidden Temple and Nickelodeon Guts. Sketch comedy shows like All That and Roundhouse were given a massive spotlight and thus broke major grounds within the network. Just naming everything here gives me such a nostalgia trip. The last time people in general seemed to unanimously agree that things at Nickelodeon were going business as usual was just after the sponge arrived. SpongeBob was an instant worldwide hit when it arrived on Nick in 1999. It very quickly became the most popular Nicktoon on the network with the whole slew of 90s Nicktoons simultaneously continuing their original runs alongside it. It was SpongeBob and the continuation of late 90s cartoons runs and early 90s cartoons reruns that kept the channel hustling into the 2000s. But something in that decade was about to change over at Nickelodeon for the absolute worst. The corporate, ugly side of Nickelodeon was really beginning to show itself around the mid-2000s, first when they began to push for more movies themed around their cartoons. Then, the magic that was 90s Nicktoons were officially taken off the air, and the same went for reruns or new episodes of said shows. What Nick had hoped for in Spongebob, that being it would remain a titan for years to come, started to dip in quality after the first movie. But this was mostly in part to creator Steven Hillenburg, rest in peace, departing the show, and the magic he once brought to the first three seasons, plus the first movie, was no longer felt. On a side note, despite this being for better or worse, Nickelodeon's success with the Spongebob franchise continued up to this day. This decline for the channel was not a temporary one, remaining in place for slightly less than a decade since around 2007. That being said, it wasn't all doom and gloom over on the network during this dark age, with a few goodies sprinkled in between a sea of rotting garbage. True gems found in this period from live action shows like Drake and Josh and Ned's Declassified School Survival Guide to even cartoons like Avatar and Danny Phantom stood as the last bastions of the old Nick. But alas, even great shows like those couldn't save the channel's dip in quality, especially when they themselves came to an end around 2007-2008. Now, you're probably expecting this being the end of the story for Nick, that the Dark Ages would last indefinitely and consume the network into nothing more than a fragmented memory. But you'd be wrong in thinking that. As the video title suggests, over the past four or five years, Nickelodeon has slowly but surely moved out of the Dark Ages and into some form of renaissance. 
This age could be pinpointed to roughly about 2015 when a whole new slate of cartoons were greenlighted and live action shows, while still incredibly poor compared to those of the 90s and early 2000s, were beginning to be tossed to the wayside. Even Spongebob, the show that for many years was on a heavy decline, had a big win with its second movie, Sponge Out of Water, in 2015. Creator Steven Hillenburg came back to help with the movie and subsequently came back to help with the show, seeing the older season's magic return in the later half of season 9, all the way up to his unfortunate passing from ALS in 2018 with season 12. Last year, Nickelodeon unveiled plans to reboot older Nicktoons properties from the 90s with Invader Zim, Rocco's Modern Life, and Rugrats and so forth expected to be released within the next few years in the forms of TV movies and full-length shows. In conclusion, or should I say in retrospect, the history of Nickelodeon is absolutely fascinating. They started out small in the late 70s, originally under a different name as a children's educational channel, rose to their highest of highs in the late 80s to late 90s, fell flat on its face in the mid to late 2000s, remaining in a dark age for nearly 10 years, but came out of it seemingly stronger and more focused than ever before. Who knows what the future holds for this 40 plus year old television network? Will this renaissance usher in a new, more darker age? Or will they stay the course on a path of success? Only time will tell, my friends. But all I can say is that I wish them the best of luck. Thank you for watching.